Michael J. Fox is back in a documentary about Michael J. Fox. It's called Still, and it's dropping Friday on Apple TV+. Plus. It is indeed, and I really hope that you see it because it's excellent. I thought it was excellent. I don't know what you think, Alonzo, but I thought it was pretty great. Um, I had a huge crush on Michael J. Fox when I was like 13 years old. I had his TV Guide cover scotch taped up to the inside of my locker in high school. I thought he was so darn cute. The sad sack story is Michael J. Fox gets this debilitating disease and it crushes him. Yeah, that's boring. If you have not subscribed yet, we'd really love to have you. I know we're heading into summer movie season and all the big, shiny, noisy stuff is coming. But when there's a documentary like this coming out, we'll always take time to chat about it. So we, we do it all. We'd love to have you join us here at our Breakfast All Day community. So still a Michael J. Fox movie says it all right there in the title. This is about Michael J. Fox in his own words, directed by Davis Guggenheim, who won an Academy Award for An Inconvenient Truth, longtime documentary maker. And what he has done here is allow Michael J. Fox, in his own words, to sit down in front of the camera and look you in the eye and make you feel as if he is talking to you personally, directly about his life and his career and Parkinson's and how Parkinson's has affected his life and his career. And it kind of reminded me a bit of that, the Errol Morris in Terratron structure. Oh, right. You know, <laughs> where it's like looking into you and like deeply into you. It creates this really powerfully intimate sensation. And he's had Parkinson's now for, gosh, 30 years. He was diagnosed yeah. in 1991. You know, and he hid it for a long time, but like the twinkle in the eye is still there. Right. And that boyish charm and that incredibly Canadian self-deprecating <laughs> sense of humor. He's he's so funny. And like the timing that that superb, impeccable, natural timing that made him a superstar in the 80s, like it's still there. It'll take him a minute sometimes to get to that zinger, that snappy one liner that he knows he's got in him, um, but it's coming. And so what Davis Guggenheim has done here, besides letting him just talk to you about his experiences, and he's very candid and very charming, is he has concocted this pastiche of images with Michael Hart, who edited it, edited it masterfully, taking movie clips and TV clips from Family Ties and reenactments and tying it all together with Michael J. Fox's narration, reading from his books that he has written, to allow his own work to comment on his life. And it's so clever and it moves so beautifully. And like, there's this one incredibly breathtaking sequence where it's cutting between him making family ties and back to the future mm, simultaneously. Right. Like yeah. I had no idea he did that. Like he would shoot family ties in the day and then get rushed to wherever he had to go that night to shoot back to the future and stay up all night shooting, maybe get a little bit of sleep. And the way they have concocted it with like, reenactments and actual footage from this show and actual footage from the movie commenting on what is going on in his life is so well done. I was just impressed by it over and over again. You learn a lot about him and how fame changed him and how he felt out of a need for professional and personal survival to hide his Parkinson's diagnosis for many years. And that's very illuminating as well. When you look back at some of the clips and see like the tricks that he, he did to yeah. try to disguise that from us. So I thought this was really great. This could, this could have been an eat your vegetables movie and it's not <laughs> like it moves so well and he's so likable and so authentic that um, I thought it was great. Yeah, I, I like that. I, maybe not as much as you did, but uh, no, I, I think it's really well done. The the editing, the way that they use his movies and TV shows to comment on, like you said, the moments of his life kind of reminded me of like the sort of those. I don't know if you ever seen any Mark Rappaport movies where he does these kind of video essays. It's probably his most famous one is Rock Hudson's Home Movies, where this actor pretending to be Rock Hudson shows you all these clips from Rock Hudson movies that sort of suggest that his homosexuality was always there on the screen if you were paying oh. attention. Mm -hmm. Just these little things. And it's, it's the same thing. It's, like, it's out of context, but in this new context, it seems to tell you something, you know. So while he's doing Family Ties and Back to the Future, there's all these clips of like him sort of bursting through the door on Family Ties, like, sorry, I'm late, you know, and just mm -hmm. giving it that same kind of thing as though that, that was what was really happening, which it kind of was, but not entirely. It's a fascinating story in terms of here's this guy who like became huge hugely hugely popular like had show business at his feet and then like this disease happens and like you 
you try and cope with it. And then it finally you're like, fuck it. I'm just going to tell people and then, you know, make whatever decisions come next. And then it goes into some of his activism later. I would have liked more from Tracy Pollan. Yeah, there are no talking heads in this movie. There's no, like, doctors explaining his condition. There's no Meredith Baxter Bernie anecdotes or whatever. You know? Right, yeah. Like, you see her. You see the family. There's moments where they're hanging out in the kitchen or doing stuff or whatever. And you see footage of them. But, like, he talks about, we got married and, you know, she suddenly becomes, like, a single mom. And I'm the, you know, the 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 Lamaze partner with narcolepsy because I'm out making movies and doing all my stuff and blah, blah, blah. And, and it's true. Like, I mean, he at least acknowledges the fact that, that she kind of kept the whole family machine going while he was out, you know, making movies, making movies. And then he talks later about like how much she took on his burden and has taken care of him and stuff. And all I kept thinking was like, I would like to hear her perspective about this yeah. because the, you do get this impression of like this woman who fell in love with this guy and then like got saddled with, you know, his kids, his illness, like all these things. And so I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I kind of felt like, uh, I, she has a story to tell too, and it's, right. And as it's he part says, I'm sorry, yeah. And as he says, like she was an incredibly gifted actress, mm -hmm. like she was like a serious New York theater actress, yeah, and gave it all up to be the mom, to be his caretaker. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm interested in, I mean, hearing what she thinks about that as well. I mean, we see her on camera quite a bit, and yeah. what an omnipresence she is for him. Um, and he definitely sings her praises, but that that's a good point. Yeah. But no, I, I think this movie does a lot right. And it's, you know, I have not read any of the books. So like, I didn't know about his, how he, you know, became an alcoholic because he was mm. just trying to cope with the symptoms and all that stuff. I mean, like he really gets into it. And, and I think obviously, you know, I'm sure there's plenty we aren't hearing about, but what he mm. is sharing is still pretty intimate and pretty, you know, uh, uh, revelatory. And it reminded me just what a giant star he was i kind of forgot about that you know but you 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 look back and like oh yeah that show is huge those movies were huge and it was all happening at the same time and um so yeah i think it's really interesting and i i think it's great that he participated like it's it's very poignant at one point they ask him like why are you telling all this now and he's basically like well because at some point i won't be able to yeah. you know which which i found really really moving so yeah uh, people should absolutely check this out Yes, for sure. It is on Apple TV Plus. And the, the one little complaint that I have is an interesting music mix, but mm -hmm. sometimes the choices are kind of like cringe inducingly on the nose. Like, <laughs> I love Kenny Loggins. This is it. <laughs> but to play that as he and his dad are driving to LA with dreams of stardom, it's a yeah, little but I, on the nose. I, I like that song so much. I forgave it. But Me yes, too. I'm like, you go, right. you're, you're, you're station wagon. Go chase your dreams. <laughs> the waiting is over. Uh, exactly. <laughs> You're back um, so to the I'm going to say a 9.2. This was excellent. Wow. Okay. I said a 7.8. I think wow. it's 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 good and people people should definitely take a look. And if you are so young that you don't even know who Michael J. Fox is outside of that guy in those movies with the car, um, you know, you should you'll you'll learn a lot.